Howdy, and welcome back to Bare Bow Basics. In previous segments, we talked about the selection of your riser and components such as the arrow rest and plunger that were installed as critical pieces of your riser setup. In this segment, we'll round out that conversation by talking a little bit about optional upgrades. These are components that most archers in competitive bare bow typically change out in order to optimize the fit and the feel of the riser for better shooting performance. If you talk to most archery coaches, you find that one of the main struggles that beginners and some intermediate archers have is placement of the bow hand on the grip. When those beginners go looking for advice, they typically find the same information being regurgitated. Make sure you use a finger sling or wrist sling. Make sure your bow hand is relaxed. Make sure you don't grab the bow. And while all of those facts are true, they don't always help the beginner understand how they need their bow hand to interact with the grip. I like to teach a simple analogy of the bicycle handlebars. If you think of the grip of your riser, like the handlebars of a bicycle, you start to understand that every push and pull of the grip can cause movement in the riser during the shot. Not only does pressure matter, but placement matters too. The further out towards the edge of the grips you press, the more of an effect on the riser during the shot. So not only do we have to pay attention to how we press, but where. We return to the target bale at four yards, borrowing my wife's setup for a series of final demonstration shots. On the left is a well-composed shot where I carefully place my bow hand into the grip to ensure my pressure point is centered and on plane with the tune of this bow. On the right hand side, I deliberately make two form errors, putting my bow hand too far inboard on the grip and exaggerating the pressure on the right edge of the bow grip. I'll play the clip at one quarter speed so you can see the results. While both arrows seem to fly towards the intended point of impact as based on their aim, we can see the arrow on the right flies dramatically worse on its way off the bow. There's a myriad of issues going on here, so let's back it up and look at it from the moment of launch frame by frame. We can see immediately due to the poor grip position, the arm guard is sticking out too far and gets in the way of the string. This causes a string slap, which begins a harmonic oscillation in the entire system. It also induces too much force into the tail of the arrow, which causes it to slap into the plunger and jump into a tail high position on its way down range. With the excess residual energy on the right edge of the grip and in the harmonic string oscillation, the riser is forced to torque itself pointing towards the left. This is a perfect example of poor follow through on the bow. It is a direct result of poor grip placement and poor pressure point. Our desire is to see what happens on the left hand side. With an ideal grip placement and pressure point, there is no unnecessary force placed on the riser such that it would turn, so it jumps straight towards the target and the arrow is able to leave, wiggling its way downrange towards the intended point of aim. This now clearly demonstrates the importance of bow hand position on the grip and pressure point position throughout the shot execution. With that additional information, we can now start a quick discussion about grip selection for when you're ready to upgrade to an aftermarket grip. Like every competitive barebow archer out there, there will come a point where your factory grip doesn't suit your needs any longer. Whether it's a lack of comfort or a consistency issue, being able to place your pressure point in the same spot every time, you will end up turning to an aftermarket grip for a more customized fit and feel unique to your bow hand. This is because every archer has a unique shape, size, and muscle tone in their bow hand. 
This is a very personalized characteristic. As a result of these individual characteristics, it makes it pretty much impossible for me to recommend any specific grip for you to go look at. What I can say is based on the information that I've shared and the understanding that you've now gained, you can look at grips much more critically beyond the simple perspective of, is it comfortable in my hand? To, where does the grip encourage my hand to go? And where does the pressure point end up based on where the grip is in my bow hand? You can look for additional features like indexing edges or palm swells that help with referencing inside your hand so that you can get that consistency from shot to shot. And remember, at the end of the day, you can always grind on the grip a little bit or build it up in small sections with a little bit of putty in order to truly customize the grip to your hand. The last component of your riser that affects the feel of the shot during execution is the weight. Once known as counterbalances or stabilization weights, today's modern weights have essentially gone from being an optional component to pretty much standard equipment on every single competitive barebow setup right out of the gate. And while there's not an awful lot we can talk about for a hunk of metal that bolts to your bow, there are a few key points I want to emphasize as I feel it's important for beginners to fully grasp them. Weights serve two critical functions on your bow. The first, obviously, is to add mass. The laws of inertia indicate that a heavier object resists changes in position more easily. Therefore, by adding mass to our bow, when we're at full draw, our riser won't want to move as much. This helps reduce what we call our aiming float. Now, there is a point of diminishing returns. We can't just keep adding weight onto the bow forever because while our float may get smaller, the amount of weight can may become difficult for our bow arm to keep up. What ends up happening is the bow begins to drop during aiming, which results in something we call a drive-by shot. Drive-by shots are dangerous because they can and often do break your shooting process down the road. So it's absolutely something to be avoided, if at all possible. The second major function of the weight is to change the center of gravity. If you'll recall in a previous segment, I didn't really recommend integrated weights that are made by manufacturers. While they're cool and they're fun to look at, they often don't actually change the center of gravity by that much because they're bolted to a lower portion of the riser. By not changing the center of gravity, all they really accomplish is adding mass. Our goal is to do both with our weight. So a standard cylinder bolted into the front stabilizer bushing hole generally actually has better leverage for affecting the center of gravity compared to those integrated weights. It's closer directly to the pivot point of the grip, which is where the throat of your hand goes, and allows it with more effect to change the balance of the riser. Now, today's modern weights actually have a new feature called an offset. An offset gives you a third dimension of adjustability rather than just forward back to tip. You can actually offset the weight to one side as necessary. This allows you to change the balance of center of gravity out to one side or the other of the riser for necessary adjustments and tuning. It's a neat feature to have. Now, typically the last question people will ask is, how much weight do I need? And normally this is a trial and error process. However, I can tell you from personal experience, most beginner students fare well with a weight that's between eight and 11 ounces. This is an 11 ounce cylinder. So it gives you a good idea of the size that you should be looking for. The only time I would go up from this is if you have a student with greater stature in their upper body, a lot of deltoid and shoulder muscles, they may be able to support a slightly heavier bow. That's where something like maybe a 15 ounce weight would be suggested and acceptable. But that's a rare case. Most archers do just fine with an eight to an 11 ounce weight. This offers the necessary center of gravity modification out front to help the bow tip forward naturally during the shot or stay upright. 
and dampen the aiming float enough so that the bow doesn't feel jittery during aiming. To wrap up this segment, I want to respond to some of the inquiries I've had regarding the shirt that I was wearing in the previous segment. Originally, I made some of these designs just so that I would have something to wear while filming these informational videos. Over time, I realized that others may actually want them as well because they're enjoying the information that I'm sharing and they want others to know about it also. So, I've created a Printify pop-up shop that allows you to go out to a website and purchase these shirts yourself directly. Now keep in mind that Printify pop-up shops unfortunately can only ship to the United States at this time. The shirts are all sold at production cost. I'm not interested in making any money on this. If you're interested, I'll include a link in the description below so that you can go out and browse all the different designs that I've created. As always, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to sharing more information with you in our next segment.